seeking dragon eggs that were hidden there in magical stasis to hatch at separate, scattered future times. Hail and well met and welcome back to another Realms Lore episode. I am here with the original creator of the Forgotten Realms himself, Sarah Ed Greenwood. And today we're taking a look at the Lordless Country. Want to explain a little, buddy? Sure. This video is about Daggerdale. A, a dale that is not a nice place to go to if you want, like, peace, tranquility, law, order, and good government. Sounds very welcoming. Mm, yeah, yeah. Not a dale you want to go to. I wonder what's there. Oh, with daggers. Adventurous country. <laughs> Yes. If you're enjoying these Realms Lore videos, please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash edgreenwood. If you become a protector of the realms there, it actually helps us support continuing to create videos on this channel for you. So, uh, yeah, please enjoy this Realms Lore video on Daggerdale. A land of dark forested ravines and rock outcrops that break up a landscape of rolling hills, ranches, small homestead farms, and overgrown abandoned steadings. Daggerdale, to those who keep to its dirt lanes, is a place of many wandering streams and ponds that appear on no map. No signposts, hardy local folk who want to be left alone, and danger. It acquired the nickname the Lordless Country in the early 1300s DR, not because it had no lord, but because orc and hobgoblin and bugbear raiding bands Trolling hungry predator monsters and zent raids were all so numerous that it might as well not have had a lord. The lord either controlled Dagger Falls and not much else, or spent his days riding hard to the rescue all over the dale with a small armed band, so he resembled more an independent adventuring band than a ruler and his army. Woodlots and untamed woodlands where forests are swallowing farms left fallow by the dead are everywhere, and anyone seeking a living in Daggerdale who isn't a farmer is almost always a forester. That is, a hunter, a trapper, after both food and furs, or a woodcutter, or all three. Adventurers and gleaners, either prospectors for Emeralds can be found in the Dagger Hills, an iron nigh everywhere in the Dale, or herb seekers make up the few folk behind that almost. The overall population is so low that game remains more abundant than every other Dale in the Dale Lands. Bandits are almost as locally numerous as the prowling monsters, and the constant peril has forced surviving Dagner, as they have become known, over the last decade to fortify their homesteads and harden them to fear and mistrust outsiders. So that, outside of Dagger Falls, only a few minstrels and peddlers are trusted and other newcomers shun. Most Dale farmers no longer try to keep livestock beyond a few milk cows or goats, although there are small herds of sheep east of downriver along the Desh from Dagger Falls. The most recent Lord of Daggerdale, elderly and ailing Barathol Cormero, went missing a winter back, leaving a lot of spilled blood behind, so it seems very likely he was slain. However, the lack of a body plus an aggressive denunciation by a visiting harper, Talatha Durmeyer, who very loudly claimed that the Zentrum had killed Lord Barathol when he refused to be blackmailed or bribed into cooperating with them, and the coincidence that a wealthy Sembian was visiting Dagger Falls and openly supported her in these beliefs, abetted by a Cormirian noble who was passing through and pointedly reminded everyone that there are other living Cormerals, has stalled anyone's swift move to put their own replacement on the Dagger Throne. So, uneasy political maneuverings in the form of backroom whisperings and daggers wielded bloodily in alleys now hold sway in Dagger Falls. The local church of Leviathar has stepped forward to try to put an acting lord in place to at least govern the lord's retinue, Lord Cormeril's army, but are being resisted, in part because it's an increasingly open secret that the Dagner worship of Leviathar is covertly financed by the Zents, who see it as a way to ultimately controlling the settlements of Daggerdale from within. 
Dagger Falls and the rest of the Dale are also home to spies supported by Shadowdale, spies hired by Sembia and by Cormir, and other spies who are visiting Harpers. Complicating matters still more, Clumsy Zent attempts to infiltrate the Lord's retinue from within led to open infighting in its upper ranks, and it has splintered into the Watch of Dagger Falls, 90 strong, mostly cynical veteran fighters, afoot, and an almost rebel, the Watch Without Force, of 30-odd mounted warriors. The latter still tries to patrol the major roads of the Dale from a base in Castle Daggertail. If either of these new forces tried to call on village militias, as the Lord's retinue did on three occasions, they may, or may not, be heeded by any answer to their calls. Which, of course, may mean certain Zentrum, and independent adventurers for that matter, see this as an ideal time to make a bid for the Dagger Throne, which, by the way, is now said to be haunted by the muttering ghost of Randall Lorne, some say, by his grandsire Colderon Lorne, others believe, or by this or that long-dead king, Enkar, or Lich or Dragon. The array of rumors is impressively broad. The tales agree that whoever sits on the throne gets frequent advice and criticism and irascible comments whispered into their minds. Daggerdale has increasingly become a home to devout worshippers of Malar, who run frequent holy hunts that try to seek out and take down large and impressive monsters, but usually end up battling wolves, spiders prowling out of spider haunt wood, and raiding bands of orcs, hobgoblins, goblins, and buckbears. Far rarer explorers of the Dale are drow warbands or outcast driders, but handfuls of dwarven adventurers seeking to repopulate the fallen dwarf realm of Tethyamar come up from beneath the desert south mountains to eliminate drow whenever they find them, and they have barely managed to keep drow from establishing any lasting presence in Daggerdale. The elves of Cormansor seldom have anything to do with the Dale, but ruthlessly slaughter or drive back drow, dwarves, and zents from expanding south and east, and so keep Daggerdale something of, as an old farmer Shadowdale once put it, a Wilderland War Cauldron. After the founding Morn family was succeeded by the Cormerals from Cormir, Randall Morn's younger sister Silver, the last known member of the Blood of Morn, though there are some hidden others that don't realize their heritage, something that may someday become important, married into the Cormerals, the Zentrum made several attempts to seize the Dale. These failed in large part because they were Zentrum tests for the ambitious Zents who led them, more than they were concerted efforts to invade and conquer. Envoys from the Elves of Cormansor, the city of Hillsfar, and the kingdom of Cormir all warned the Zentrum that openly seizing Daggerdale would be considered an act of war worth responding to by hunting down and slaying Zents everywhere. Then, a dragon's raids devastated the Dale and made it not worth conquering to the Zets, who were really after the fabled riches of Tethyamar and full control of the strongholds of the fallen dwarven realm as an anchor for their across Anorok trade route linking the Moon Sea with the Sword Coast. They revised their plans. Taking Daggerdale would now happen down the road, after the verdant valley of the Tesh and Tethyamar at its head were firmly in Zent hands. In the meantime, the Zents, who were encountering enemies on many fronts as they sought to expand, and valued control of the rich metal mines north of the Moon Sea over all else, aside from rebuilding Zental Keep itself, decided a more covert approach to backwater afterthought Daggerdale was advisable. What little hope and aid the folk of Daggerdale receive comes from Shadowdale, preferential prices on needed daily goods, such as tools, weapons, and textiles, and surprisingly, from the Zentrum rebuilding Zental Keep, who eventually want to develop Daggerdale into their breadbasket food source under their own puppet lord, as Malik was in the mid-1300s DR. They have spies not only among the folk living in the settlements of Daggerdale, including some smiths, carpenters, and roofers, 
but roaming the countryside. And these roamers include some shapeshifters of various sorts. However, most werewolves encountered in Daggerdale, notably the numerous wares of the Dagger Hills, are likely long-time residents of the Dale or have settled there from elsewhere, such as the Hullack region of Cormir. A recent rumor among the dwarves who surreptitiously visit Tethyamar often, keeping a close eye on Zent explorations, claims a beholder working with several elithids is sculpted unseen into the wilderlands of the Western Dale, seeking dragon eggs that were hidden there in magical stasis to hatch at separate, scattered future times. Four or five eggs most spreading these rumors say, though it's not known which dragon or even which sort of dragon left them or why, or if it was someone else who stole them. Is this how Manchun grew his draconic steeds? The name of the beholder, it seems, is the Yuxulf, and it came from the Vast. Meanwhile, tension in Dagger Falls over the vacant Dagger Throne grows ever greater, and bodies are often found in the alleys of mornings. So there you have it, Daggerdale, as safe and as peaceful as ever. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak, and this time around, we're doing this. And this is Sahanin Moonbo, the elven mother goddess, the big female goddess of the pantheon of the elves. Sahanin Moonbo. Moonbow is just a compound word, moon and bow, and it sounds like that, moonbow. Known to many in the realms, from the little rhyme, Sahanin Moonbow, who knows where her arrows will go? So if you're trying to remember it, Sahanin Moonbow, who knows where her arrows will go? Where's your other arm? The one on this side? Yeah. A little bit, <laughs> right here, scoot dear. a little bit closer and get your arm up there. <laughs> awesome. Anyway. Hail and well met and well flip the bit bat bat bag Ready? You're the one, there is no other so yourself, you funky mother. That was pretty good. Did you make that up? Yeah. That was pretty that was pretty good. Guts, glory, ram. <laughs> ram? Is that, is, yeah. that, is that a Dodge Ram commercial? Yeah. That was my first voice. Or Liz Cunt. Was did you did the Dodge Ram commercial? Up in Canada, at the very end of the commercial. Canada has Dodge. When they were doing that final thing with the animation of all the... <laughs> I know exactly what you're okay. talking about. Um, they had a... They talked over it. <laughs> so they cut they cut the sound completely from that last little thing. So nice. They, and they, they said, now what do we do? That's one way to fix it. And they were doing it in the Ryerson Studios, which is the CBC Studios. It was both. We were shared. And I said, oh, that's easy. Guts, glory, ram. And they said, oh, man um can you sign this release here's 25 <laughs> bucks and then they just used it